Hey everybody, welcome to my Ninja Turtles channel. We are gonna be joined by a Ninja Turtles super fan tonight, Michelle Ivy. Possibly the number one Ninja Turtles super fan in the whole world. So it is gonna be a great night. I'm excited you're all here. Hold on to your shell. Click the like button, of course. Type a pizza slice in the chat. Get excited and let's go! go! Welcome to my Ninja Turtles channel. We have a great guest tonight, Michelle Ivy. Totally obsessed, Ninja Turtles girl. What a fan, super fan, number one TMNT super fan. So I am happy you are all here, Friday night. Nowhere else I'd rather be. So of course, click the like button, subscribe. Thank you for being here should be pretty fun. I'm excited to talk to Michelle. Let's bring her right in. Let's bring her right in, okay? Let's see what we have going on here. Michelle, can you hear me? Now you... I hear you, yes. Oh, sorry for the delay. Wasn't sure if I was coming in or not. I'm gonna put you on the screen, is that okay? Totally cool. Oh, great. Do what you will with me, Shredder. Oh, there she is, Michelle Ivy. The queen of TMNT. Give it up, Shredder. The princess of TMNT. Is that a very exciting intro? <laughs> I'm just a, a crazy turtle fan who loves sharing the passion. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for joining me. Is my voice coming through okay? Yes, I hear you fine. And do you see my little character on the screen? I do. Oh, great. Just wanted to make sure you could hear me and see me before I kept kept blabbering along and giving you the craziest introduction ever. Well, okay. thank you. So, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. You've got a great collection in the background, of course. For anybody that doesn't know, Michelle Ivy is a Ninja Turtle super fan for a while. Very well known as a super fan as well. Notoriety as a super fan. And um, you did the Cowabunga Corner YouTube show. You've got the Ivy Angelo Twitter and Instagram accounts. You're around for anybody that isn't aware. Is that how you would describe yourself? A Ninja Turtle super fan? Yeah, yeah, a turtle historian too, because I do a lot of helping people with the facts of the Ninja Turtle history, and I try to share a lot of that. Oh, great! Yeah, you definitely um, you've done a lot to document Ninja Turtles, and I know on Calabunga Corner you've done like a hundred interviews with all the heavy hitters, Barry Gordon, Ciro Nielli, whole bunch of other people. You've got a very established history as a Ninja Turtles super fan, so I'm really thankful that you joined me tonight. It started in 92. That's when I first like started meeting the people behind the scenes. And it's just been a landslide ever since. And then I started to decide, let's share what they're telling me instead of just keeping it to myself. <laughs> That's so cool. You got into the Turtles in 92. Did you like the movies or the cartoon or something? I got into the cartoon in 89. I started meeting the people in 92. Oh, became... started meeting them in 92. Yeah, I, I became a fan for the toys first. So I got like a Mikey right here. Um, Very <laughs> and nice. Then, and uh, the comic books followed in the movies and the coming out of the shell store. <laughs> so you've been a fan since 89. Yeah. Wow. Why did you like him as a kid? Why did you like the turtles as a kid? Why do you think they were so popular back then? All the turtle mania stuff. For me, it's I, I was into every cartoon. I've always been a cartoon freak to this day. I'll sit down and watch like cartoon network or nickelodeon in the background just having different cartoons running on netflix even i'll just marathon a, a random cartoon um and as a kid i was into ghostbusters and thundercats and he man and when ninja turtles entered my life i was being game beaten at school and they taught me that uh you don't need superpowers or a lot of money to stand up for yourself so i got into the martial arts and they actually really helped me in a lot of ways wow that's a that's a Crazy story. And you became a super fan just a few years after that. So they became a big part of your life. And then by nine, by 92, you were meeting people that were creating the Ninja Turtles, people behind the scenes. Oh, I think by within a year, I was kind of the, into the super fan because I was reading all the magazines. But in 92, we found out about TurtleCon where Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird was going to be. And my family did a family trip out there and I got to meet Eastman and Laird, the full Mirage crew at that point. And then it was still another two years before I really started to get to know Kevin. 
So you had notoriety in the early 90s as a super people knew you as a super fan already in the early 90s. I was the Detroit Turtle. I did over 150 birthday parties as Mikey the Party Turtle from 1991 to 1993. Wow. So I was kind of known in my area. Yes. And um, your dad made the custom costume. He made like custom special effects and stuff like that. Yes. My dad uh, was an art director for a horror hosting show in the 70s and 80s and started making costumes and was winning world costume contests. So whatever we wanted for Halloween, we got. And in 1990, I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. He finished the day that we were going to go see the coming out of the shell store. And I kind of crashed the concert. Oh, very nice. Yeah, you have such a cool history with the Ninja Turtles. I'm so excited to speak with you. It's such a it's such an honor. You've been doing this for a long time. And it's like I'm um, I, I keep forgetting that I'm actually talking to you. I, I think I'm like just watching one of your videos or something. But that's such a cool story that you made. Um, you had the custom costume. You were the Detroit Turtle. Your dad made custom like horror effects and stuff like that that's a fun story and you had um do you still have a copy of comic book number one do you have a first print of number one i actually have it right here uh this is what i bring to conventions this is uh the carry around copy we have one that's in mint condition too and it is signed by kevin eastman and peter laird and you keep that out of um packaging you carry it with you to conventions just so people can look at it when did you get that i got this back in 1997 back in 97 wow what an what an investment. That's a something to hold on to. And my mom got hers in 1991 and it was signed at TurtleCon 92 and that was that one's the one in mint condition never out. Oh, that's and so then, cool. I don't like putting it in the frame because of something Kevin Eastman said back in the 90s about not liking seeing everything coming to him in mint condition to be signed that they make it to be read and enjoyed. So I want one out there that's actually still being looked at and enjoyed because everybody else is framing them and grading them. And I'm like, not this one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's a that's an expensive comic book. As someone's saying in the chat, Tataruzu is saying, holy grail. That's definitely an expensive comic book. That's cool that you take it around and let people check it out and enjoy it. It's something where I feel like people should be able to actually see it. And whenever I see anyone else's copy, it's just hanging up. And so this one, when I drop it, I've had men crying because I put this in their hands before going, I can't believe I'm touching it. I, I'm not worthy trying to hand it back to me. <laughs> that's exciting. That'd be, yeah, that's an exciting thing to hold. A piece of history. It's fun. Uh, um, I drop up things in people's hands too. Like I'll bring the combat cult cuts to conventions and say, this is an actual movie prop and let people check it out. Um, I'm doing an event on May 11th where I'll have a lot of the movie props in, uh, Westland, Michigan. So oh, really been hustling at the TMNT super fan for a long time. Yeah. You have the extensive collection, you have the comic books, you have the knowledge and the history. It's an all around, all around super fans. Some people only do one or the other, but you do it all. It's really, really exciting. And you even got to tour the next mutation set. Like as they were filming the next mutation, you toured the actual set. Yes. I got an email. I didn't believe it was real at first saying that this guy worked on the set of The Next Mutation. Then he told me he was Raphael. And I'm like, nah, this is somebody trying to pull my leg. And I knew people at Mirage Studios already at this point. So I was going back and forth with them uh, on stuff to ask him. <laughs> and, that, and he got it all right, which surprised me. Because I'm getting my information straight from the studio. And then I know that back then, Kevin and Peter, no, no one at Mirage knew the actors by names. It was very rare when you could bring up who's in the turtle suit and they would know what you're talking about. So I went to a martial arts class where Larry Lamb was teaching a class and I found out that he was being a stunt double for the next mutation. I thought I was going to stump that Raphael guy. And when I got back, I already had an email because I sent him an email saying I was going to meet Larry, but I already had an email saying, oh, I met Larry on the set last week. And that's when I found out it was real. And then he starts sending me pictures from the set. And then I got invited out there with my family. How exciting is that? It's, it's cool to see stuff. It's great to see something like that in person. Every, anybody can look at pictures or watch a video, but it's cool to do that in person. And um, I know on Calabunga Corner, you've interviewed like 100 people and all of your interviews were in person. This was all like a lot of pre-COVID kind of stuff. And you got to hang out with these people in person in the same room and sit at the same table. Who are some of the people that you've interviewed before? I've interviewed Leif Tilden, who was Donatello for Turtles 1 and 2. I've interviewed Michelin Sisti, who's Michelangelo for Turtles 1 and 2. Kevin Eastman, Tom Waltz, um, 
Townsend Coleman, Cam Clark, uh, Renee Jacobs, Rob Paulson, Barry Gordon, uh, Robbie Rist. Um, <laughs> interviewed everybody. Scott Williams. I try. I try to make sure I'm touching every media of Ninja Turtles. I even got interviews with some of the people who worked on the Coming Out of the Shells tour. And we have interviews sitting on the backlog waiting for me to get Cowabunga Corner back going again. One with Judith Hogue. Now, our Cam Clark interview is sitting on the side waiting to be edited and put up. I just haven't had the time. Oh, great. Now I'm talking to you. It's like I've talked to all those people by uh, one degree of separation. I've talked to you and you talked to all them. So I'm, I'm taking credit for those interviews as well. That's exciting. I've only done, um, only done a few interviews, so I'm thankful that you're speaking with me. That's cool. I'm really jealous of all those people you've gotten to speak with. Very exciting. I highly recommend conventions. That's how you network. You go through and then one person could turn around and say, oh, we really enjoyed this conversation. You should really talk to this other person. And that's how I got a lot of my interviews back in 2011. Every time I turned around, they were like, oh, have you talked? I, I talked to Mitchell and Sisti. And he's like, have you talked to Nick Palma yet? And I'm like, no, here's his number. Talk to him. So I set up an interview with Nick Palma, go to his place, do that interview. And he's like, have you talked to Mark Panther yet? And I'm like, Razar? No, no one's talked to Razar. And he's like, oh, well, here, I'll have him call you. Okay. He calls me and he's like, have you talked to Kurt Bryant yet? And I'm like, Toka, no, I've only seen one interview with him before. And they just lined me up one after another. Within two weeks, I had like eight interviews done. And it was a shock to my system. When I met up with Kurt Bryant, he actually gave me Toka's hand from the movie, an actual Jim Henson movie prop. Wow. These guys are, they are so nice and wonderful to meet. And now a lot of them are doing conventions. So I try to share every convention post I see. Even if I can't go to an event, I'd want to get the news out there for other fans to meet them. Such a good fan. You're doing stuff to help other people out, letting people check out your comic, number one. You're always giving back to other Ninja Turtles fans. And it's really a, a pure joy to watch your videos and check out your stuff online and all your you know social media posts and all that stuff. Sometimes when I'm questioning my love of the Ninja Turtles. You know, you fall in and out of love to it. I check out your page. It's always nice to see the positivity and that kind of stuff. Um, so you've been known as a fan since the 90s, early 2000s, been going to conventions since forever. Is that how you were um, approached to do the VH1 totally obsessed thing? They just knew you had notoriety as a fan and they had like a producer or something? I wasn't approached by them. I was approached by a friend who used to work at Mirage Studios. I'm not going to name the person because they're embarrassed that they sent me there after they saw the clip. Um, <laughs> but they told me, oh, this, this show is looking for super fans. They should see your collection. Uh, you should contact them. So I did the reach out because of Mirage Studios. And then uh, they end up coming and filming for three days. Anyone wants to know the true story behind that, check out Cowabunga Corner 40, where I have footage of how they did that show. <laughs> so that was something where they took a bunch of footage and then whittled it down to make you look like a wild, crazy, super, even crazier than you really are, super fan. They even hyped it up even more. Oh, they said I was trying to become a real mutant turtle and that I live on a steady diet of pizza every day. <laughs> and I'm like, anytime Fred Willard opens his mouth, it's a lie. <laughs> he was, he was. <laughs> hamming it up for the show they had they took a lot of creative license with your story well he had a script he never met me and i always wanted to meet him to talk to him about it and he passed away sadly so i never got that chance but i will say they also script you by saying something and they're like here's your question and we want you to instead of answer the question you have to say the question as if it's something you're saying and then put your answer after it and that's how they script me to say some of the stuff that is said in that video. Yeah, they really uh, coached you through it a lot and really walk you through it step by step and whittle it down to make you look a certain way. And you know, since that video, that was like in uh, mid, uh, like maybe 2004 or something, I think. Or, but it was filmed in June 2004. And uh, since that's been put on the internet, it's been a source of uh, aggravation for you. You've been bullied and stuff and people leave mean comments to say the least. I don't look at the mean comments as bullies towards me. I look at it as towards the character that VH1 created of me. That's yeah. not actually. Uh, so I jump in there and I goof with the people who's trying to do the mean comments. And they're like, oh, my goodness, it's really you. And we have real conversations. And I made friends from the same people who was originally attacking the videos. 
That's so cool. And, um, you know, you, you flipped them from a from a hater to a fan. That's the Ninja Turtles charisma that you put off, even online. You're flipping detractors into supporters. And I saw even recently on your Twitter, someone reached out from like an old chat room in the 90s. And um, they said that they used to like uh, argue with you online and you, they made peace with you like uh, 27 years later. Well, that was a um, a drama that I wasn't even part of, but because I ran the chat room that it happened in. Both sides of the drama was attacking me for not taking part in their drama. And this was one of the people who caused a lot of people to leave my chat room one day in June 98. And then I haven't heard from her, but I don't hold ill will because I wasn't part of that fight. I didn't want to be part of somebody's relationship dramas. It's not my area. I'm there to talk turtles, not who's dating who. Yeah. 30, 30 year old internet drama. That's funny. Um, <laughs> But with the V, what do, what do the um, mean comments say? What do like the bully or not bully, but what do the mean comments typically say? Just like you're crazy or it's with the Ninja Turtle she, obsession. It's every day. Um, <laughs> that's the main thing. I can't believe she took out bank loans to be able to buy a movie head. And I'm like going, uh, that just said I had good credit. Um, <laughs> and people picking on me for working minimum wage at a factory job. And I'm like going, uh, guys, if you know Michigan, Factory jobs are way above minimum wage, but that was, it's just usually comments off of uh, the stuff or me singing, follow your heart. That is the biggest thing. And when people approach me in real life and see me, they're like, oh my God, follow your heart. I'm like, yeah, I do love that song, but I wasn't actually singing it. I was trying to remember the lines when I did the show and I told them not to use it and they used it anyhow. Yeah. But- <laughs> well, you have a good attitude. You have a good attitude about all that. The people, uh, you know, they're laughing with you. That's that's nice. That um, doesn't get to you or any. I guess after a while, you just get used to it. You get numb to it, probably. But you've, you've devoted a lot of time to Ninja Turtles. And it sounds like that VH1 video, not not a regret, but maybe something you wish you would have handled differently. Maybe uh, I don't have any real regrets with it as I- I've been bullied in real life before I ever got into Ninja Turtles. I was thrown in front of cars, pushed an iron pole where I had stitches across my forehead. Uh, 15 to 30 kids would be ganging up on me. If uh, um, a substitute was in the class, the janitor would be coming in, pulling me out with a black eye, bloody nose, fat lip, whatever was happening at that moment. Uh, And so online bullying or people picking on me about the VH1 thing seems very minimum because I already got numb to what other people think about me. I'm like, I'm out there to enjoy my life. I'm going to take care of my family, my friends, my pets before I do anything with my collection and passion, but I'm going to enjoy what I have of life and make the best memories. Mm -hmm. That's a good attitude. Good, good perspective on all that. I would totally let it get to me. I would, uh, I'd seek revenge on every single, I'd go after these people. I wouldn't sleep. I wouldn't eat. I'd go crazy. There's no point in it. Uh, and a lot of those kids, I hope, have grown up since. A few of them have seen me at restaurants and stuff in the area and are like, oh, my God, Michelle, I used to sit behind you in fifth grade. And I'm like, Boy, why are you telling me that? That was not a nice person behind me. But, you know, I always try to be a, at least a little friendly. I'm not going to make friends with them. But I, I'm always like, oh, well, nice to see you again. Take care <laughs> and go on my way and go off doing what I want to be doing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you put a lot of time into the turtles. That's nice. To, do you have any regrets about purchases or anything like that? The time you've spent, do you wish you would have invested in something else? Or do you, do you think you should have been a Star Wars? You should have been a Star Wars Ninja, uh, Star Wars fan instead of Ninja Turtles. I like Star Wars, but I don't collect much of any. I got a few small things, like I got a Yoda from Toy Fair, but um, I don't have much of a Star Wars collection. I don't have any regrets because I feel Ninja Turtles help people who are in situations like I was, which is why I want to keep them around for future generations. I think that Ninja Turtles inspire people that they don't need all this extra stuff. If they feel like they're a freaking different and they're getting this attacks, they can still take care of themselves. And because of that, I think that this was one of the best franchises I could have fell into because it related to what I was going through in real life. And I love it. I love the people behind it. When you meet Kevin Eastman, he is such an amazing soul. He definitely lifts everyone that he meets. I've never seen a bad experience with Kevin with other fans. Um, And if you meet anybody who worked on those original Turtle movies, anyone who works for Jim Henson's Creature Shop, uh, their hearts are gold. It it just, there's no, there's no doubts, no regrets in it. 
And again, I've always taken care of my bills and my family before I've done what I've done with my purchases on turtles. So why go back and go, oh my goodness, I should be doing this other thing when what I've done is things that has helped other people. You've enjoyed the ride. Yeah. And you've helped other people and you made a, made a positive difference. That's good to hear. And who's, um, who's the biggest like Ninja Turtles crush you've had over the years? <laughs> Have you had a crush on anybody like uh, Kino or something? When I was a kid, I had a small crush on Kino, but that was over before I met him. And now Ernie and I are just friends and we'll just stay friends. But uh, other than that, I've, that's the only crush that I ever, any celebrity crush I've ever had. I'm not into relationships. In fact, I hated it when it was brought in Ninja Turtles. The only one that I really liked was Ninjara. <laughs> and the original Archie comics. Oh, okay favorite relationship at all and i got mad at the way they broke him up because ninjara loved raf for his attitude you don't see them fighting or having problems until they decide to break them up i'm like why why did they do that that did not make sense and it was her mad about his attitude and i'm like uh future raf warned him but you never saw the climax to that actual fight ah so you're not a fan of the all the relationship stuff all the romance in the comics and movies a little too much sometimes Sometimes. I mean, I don't mind here or there, but like Donatello's crush over April in the 2012 series didn't really go well with me. I was like, it's too forced. Um, and there's most of the time that's how I feel with relationships. I didn't mind Mona Lisa if she had more episodes in the original cartoon series. Nice. And so you don't like relationships in, in real life either. You're, you're single right now. You, you don't have Always. a. Yeah. What'd you say? I'm sorry. I spoke over you. I said, always have been. I, I'm not really into relationships now. Never had a serious partner or anything? I got chronic pain since I was 26 years old. And touch actually sends me into severe pain. Uh, I got something known as chronic regional pain syndrome. And it's pretty serious. So most people don't even want to touch me to give me a hug hello. Oh, well, I didn't know that. I was just just curious. Just wanted to know. Just curious about that. It, for anybody out there looking single, Michelle Ivy, uh, you may, you know, have an, you may have to work your your riz. So be careful out there if anybody's going for it. Wanted to give them a, a heads up. Is there any? Um, so maybe Kino, Corey Feldman, Vanilla Ice. What about these guys? Not your type. No. In fact, I didn't like Vanilla Ice till I met him. <laughs> I did not get into any of the stuff my age group was into, like nine hundred two one zero or rap when I was a kid. Uh, my favorite rap song for Turtles was Turtle Power by Partners in Crime. And I didn't really know much about Richard Usher until I grew up and met him. Um, and uh, Vanilla Ice, I read in an interview once that Yaka Cade was supposed to have that scene, but was replaced by a celebrity for Vanilla Ice. And I was disappointed because Yaka Cade did songs for all three albums. And I would have loved to have seen her in the movie. But then when I met Vanilla Ice, found out what a large Turtle fan he actually is in person. He's always got me laughing when we do talk. So I'm like, okay, now I'm cool with Vanilla Ice more than I was when I was young. Oh, that is good to know. That's good to hear. I was just curious. I, I'll, I'll quit trying to set you up with all these Ninja Turtle celebrities. I'll quit playing matchmaker over here. You need a guy. Yeah. You need a guy like me. You need a crazy guy who pretends to be a Ninja Turtle on the internet. You need a, a equal. You need a TMNT super fan. But is there anything Ninja Turtles you don't like? Is there what? Oh, sorry. I spoke over you. Is there anything Ninja Turtles you don't like? I'm not a huge fan of the Michael Bay first movie. I love the second one, but the first one, I felt like it was the April Neal movie. And I kind of blame the fans for the way that turned out. Um, and I blame Michael Bay because of his little one line saying the turtles are from an alien race. Uh, he didn't say they are an alien race, but everyone started doing all the memes and they had to change the movie. And since they did not get a higher budget to change the movie. The turtles were cut and April was given more scenes and it just did not slice together. Right. But the sequel was really well done. It just didn't get enough views because everyone judged it by the first one. So the yeah. first one kind of up, but, um, I, I enjoy rise of the TMNT when I try to separate the fact that it's Ninja Turtles. I think if it was its own thing, instead of Ninja Turtles, I would have loved it a lot more. I don't like the idea of magical weapons, but I love what Aunt and Andy did with that series. I just think it would have been better if it was not Turtles. Um, have you seen every episode of every TV show? Have you read every comic and seen every movie? 
I have seen every movie, watched every episode of the series. Um, I try to read all the comics, but I, like I sit on it for like a year or so, and then I go and read a bunch in a group. So like right now, I am not caught up on IDW. Last I read was like uh, issue 120. So I have to go back and reread those comics and go all the way through, which is what I love doing. I like starting from the beginning and going through to refresh all of it, especially that fight in issue 50. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, it's tough for me to wait a month for each new issue. That's one of the things that I'm challenged with as well. It's tough to wait a whole month for a new issue, but that's nice to hear you've seen every episode and I have you beat right now for the comics. I'm up to date for the comics, so I've got you beat. Yeah, definitely do, because I don't have, I'm normally going through, especially in wintertime, a lot of health issues. I'm also working on my own book series, so I'll shut everything else off on the internet and stuff and just focus on my own book. And that way I'm going to try and get it published hopefully this year. <laughs> nice. Well, that's good. And um, with the history of Ninja Turtles, how did you feel when they sold the turtles to Nickelodeon, when Peter Laird sold the turtles back in... Oh, nine. Was that a sad moment? Because you had built up a relationship with all the guys at Mirage Studios and suddenly the rug was pulled out from under you. And did everything become corporate? Did things change? Things have definitely changed. Uh, one, when it was at Mirage, you knew the owner's names. You knew everyone in the studio by name. There was less than 10 people there given at any time. You go in, they, you got Gary Richardson, Peter Laird, uh, Dan Berger and Jim Lawson and Michael Dooney, and Katie McGinnis. They were always there, always. And they were all my friends. I'd go in and excited just to see them. I'd be driving by and swing up into Northampton just to see how they were doing. And when the news came out, I was taken by shock because we just did the 25th uh, anniversary tour cross country. I was actually heading back from that trip, heading through, I think I was in South Dakota when my friend on the phone told me, did you know that Biocon bought the Ninja Turtles? And it just hit me like a rock. Cause to me, that meant all of my friends at Mirage just lost their job. It wasn't, Oh no, uh, a corporate owns it. It's Oh no, what's going to happen to Jim and Dan and Katie, what's happening with the guys. So as soon as I got back to Michigan, I planned a trip out to Northampton and visited Mirage and sure enough, they're all saying, yeah, we have to have all the turtle stuff over to Viacom by May. It was a very sad visit to the studio. Uh, and um, I know that there, there's a lot of them that would love to still be doing turtle comics right now. They would still love having their old job back. But yeah, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of changes. Oh, I think I may have just cut out. Can you hear me at all? My internet just may have cut out. I hear you just fine still. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if I'm broadcasting. I can hear you and see you still, but maybe I cut out for a second there. Are we back? Are we back, guys? Can you hear us in the chat? Oh, that's unfortunate. My internet cut out. Well, I can oh. still hear you, Michelle. I can still hear you. Okay. I wonder, I wonder if they were broadcasting. Can you guys hear us? Can you type a T in the chat if you guys can see the show right now? I think we're back. Yeah. Well, I think we just had a little bip. We're back. Okay. Ugh. Oh, there you are. There we are. Very nice. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, my internet's been acting up recently. I had to get a new modem. I had to get a new router. I got all this new equipment. I got a new interface. I'm There's something wrong with my internet, and I think it's in the street. It's not anything in my house, but that's the way it goes. Well, we're back now. Technology is a curse and a, a blessing type thing. You know, we love it, but at the same time, argh. Oh, great. Well, hopefully um, we didn't miss too much. Hopefully um, nothing too much got shut out but yeah it's a lot of changes when the turtles were sold to nickelodeon do you, over the years do you fall um like you've given a lot to the ninja turtles and you, you've spent a lot of time you've given a lot of your life and effort and time and energy and it's your passion like you said do you feel like you've received the love back or sometimes is it kind of like a one-way thing uh there's some people who kind of treat it like a one-way thing where i help them with a project and it's kind of like we're not part of this other thing but most of the time, the love is there. When I go to Nickelodeon, I've been brought into the animation studios, got to meet all the artists. I go to IDW. I get to meet the writers and artists and editors. Uh, everywhere I go, people know who I am. Uh, one time, I got invited to Toy Fair. And when I got to Toy Fair, um, I didn't know what to do. It was my first time there. As I'm walking around looking at the place, 
I find out there's a press room and I'm doing Cowabunga Corner at the time, which is why I was invited. And I go into the press room and this guy had all these toys. And I'm like, how'd you get toys? They're not selling here. Oh, I review them. I'm like, oh, so you just mentioned you're a reviewer and you get toys. I like that. And then he's like, I see you like turtles. And I'm like, maybe a little bit. And I mentioned how they taught me to read, defend myself and got me thousands of friends around the world. And he's, you need to come to our work. I'm like, what? You need to come to our work. And I'm going to go, wait a second, what? He goes, when do you leave? And I'm like, tomorrow at 5 p.m. Before you leave, you need to come to where I work. And I'm like, uh, okay, where do you work? And he's Viacom World Headquarters. So the next day, I got to go to Viacom. He brings me up to the 40th floor, and we're walking around. He's trying to find somebody who works in that department with Turtles to give us a tour because he works down in MTV doing editing. And we see this one guy sitting working in a computer, step into his cubicle, just into his view is the, the one guy and I'm standing behind him. And uh, he's like, Hey, I met this turtle fan over at toy fair and thought she could get a tour. And the, his, her name is, and the guy turns and looks over Michelle Ivy of Cowabunga corner. You know who she is? Well, yeah, we all know who she is. We watch Cowabunga corner here. And he brought us downstairs to the designer floor where they're making all the uh, stuff to go into the bathrooms, towels, blankets, uh, they're actually designing all of that on that floor. And those people saw me as soon as I came in and stood up and surrounded me. So, yeah, they know who the fans are. They know about the different videos out there. It's not just me. If I bring up, like, when I go to Playmates Toys, I mention, yeah, I just came from Toka's house. They'll be like, how's Toka doing? Does he need any toys? What does he need? What can we do for him? They're fantastic with people. If you reach out to them, they do definitely respond. Oh, that's good. You made a lot of good memories with Turtles and you've helped a lot of other people make good memories too. And like, um, you know, you've been fans, been a big fan for a long time. Number, possibly the number one Ninja Turtle super fan, just another super fan, one of many Ninja Turtle super fans. And, um, you made a lot of good memories over the years and it hasn't been all, um, it hasn't been smooth sailing the whole time. Had a lot of ups and downs. Um, your dad passed away recently and um, you your house flooded as well. I've had two floods, one in 2014 where it was sewer baggage coming and hitting our basement while we were down in Florida. So it sat like that for a week and destroyed so much stuff. We couldn't move back into that house. And then in 2020, we were trying to escape this place. I'm still trying to escape this place. I hate this place. So we rented a house. We just got this place ready to sell. And my mom calls us and said, there's a flood warning. We were told by the landlords that only the garage floods. So we had a hundred boxes that were not unpacked yet in the garage. We run, bring those all into the house. They're stacked in the kitchen, my bedroom, the living room, my mom's room, just all these boxes brought in from outside. And then the flood came into the house and it attacked all of our old films, our photos, are uh, just everything it could get into, it got into. Did um any a lot, lot of your Ninja Turtle stuff get ruined as well? No, n actually, because that was lake water, most of the toys that got hit by it, I could just wash off. It wasn't sewage. And um, the uh, most of my box stuff, like the comics and everything, were on the second level of the place. So th that stuff got protected. A uh, few uh, turtle items got a little bit of water damage on the bottom, but nothing severe. Wow. So a rough few years for you. And um, all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, you got a little bit of good news from from Tom Waltz. They were going to name a meteor after you in the comics. M.I.V. Meteor. Saint the Angel Tom Waltz. He, you know, he proved he reached out. You weren't forgotten. You're, and he, he gave you a planet. They named a planet after you. Yes. He's kind of hinted that something was coming up when we saw him in uh, September that year. He's like, you got to read this. You got to read this. And uh, then he would poke at me and saying are you ready to read this? <laughs> yeah, we definitely caught that right away. And I posted it on my Instagram. Yeah. That you're immortalized forever. in the Ninja Turtle. Now you're a part of the lore as well. So shines a good deed in a weary world. Now I've done more than that with turtles. Like uh, I worked on the 2007 movie. I was a script consultant and I worked on a sticker album that was released overseas for the next mutation. And just recently the art of mayhem, uh, gives a special shout out to me in the back. I'm also in Netflix, The Toys That Made Us, The Turtle Power Doc, and also on the season seven of the original cartoon series bonus features. Oh, good. That's nice to hear. I think you should write a story for the Ninja Turtles comics as well. They have the black, white, and green series coming up. And 
I, I declare you, I demand it right now. I'm st- I'm going to start a petition that you should write for black, white, and green. I do know how to, the, each of the turtles personalities and stories, but it's all they come, good. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I'm definitely writing my own stuff right now. I'm trying to do a, an alien book. <laughs> That's nice. Well, everyone should, um, if you don't already follow Ivy Angelo on Twitter and Instagram and check out Cowabunga Corner to keep up with Michelle Ivy. Um, do you have a couple minutes to take some questions from the chat real fast? Does anybody in the chat have any questions? You okay yeah. to hang out for a couple minutes more? Great. Thank you. What a Friday night hanging out with Michelle Ivy. This is nice. Us in the chat hanging out. Michelle Ivy, TMNT super fan. Um, what are you, do you think you're going to be a fan forever? What, why do you like the Ninja Turtles as an adult? As an adult, it's because of how much they've helped me in my life and how many friends I have because of the turtles. Some of my best friends that have even really saved my life, I've met because of Ninja Turtles. Do you have any thoughts on the Mutant Town arc in the IDW comics? IDW comics, the Mutant Town arc? I'm not a big fan of too many mutants. And that was one of my problems even with the 2012 series. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons after issue 100, I was having a harder time. The mutant bomb went off, and I'm just like, it takes the special out of the Ninja Turtles away. They're 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 great because they are different and they're going through this. And now there's just a bunch of mutants. And I I like it more when it's just a few mutants. Yeah, I like um I like when there's only four turtles and I like when they're alone in the world. I think that's an important part of the turtles ask they're alone and that's part of their story. And I, I connect with I like when the turtles are isolated and depressed and struggling with their existence in the world I, that's my favorite type <laughs> well um, i love the three series they're not all depressed but there's not as many mutants in the world yeah i like the 2003 series do you have a f- your favorite turtles michelangelo right michelle angelo do you have another favorite character other than michelangelo well each series is a little bit different like if you ask me about the next mutation rap and don are my favorite turtles um so donatello is usually my second favorite turtle it's usually mike and don together Especially after the first movie, that I just love that pair up. So even my shirt is Mikey and Donnie. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, out of outside of the turtles, like the 2012 series, my favorite characters were Splinter and Shredder. I loved every episode where it was the two of them. Um, especially the Tales of Yokai episode that was beautifully done. I uh, in the original comic books, I loved Shredder, even though he's only in the one issue. But for me, that's my favorite background story where his brother's killed when he's only eight years old. Um, <laughs> there's just so much other depth. Uh, for the next mutation, I also love Dr. Queese. He's one of my favorite villains of Ninja Turtle history because there was character growth that was shown in the scripts more so than the show itself. Oh, just, great. Uh, what a great, yeah, it was a good show. Um, well, I only have the free version of Zoom, so we're running out of time. I have like a minute and a half left, so... I just wanted to say you've had a lot of ups and downs. You're a wonderful, you got a wonderful story. You're an inspiration to Ninja Turtles fans. And we, we love the same thing. We have a lot in common. So I want to tell everyone in the chat, follow Ivy Angelo and Cowabunga Corner. And I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of all Ninja Turtles fans. Oh, thank you. I've been watching your videos from time to time when I can, and you're doing a great job. Oh, thanks so much. And thanks for the nice comments about the video I made about you. That was a pleasure to make. And I just wanted to share your story with more people. You got a lot of it that I'm not used to seeing in videos, so I was shocked and impressed by the video to where I've shown it to some of my friends. Oh, good. Well, I'm happy you enjoyed it and just wanted to say thanks again. Have a great night, Michelle. Thank you so much. Cowabunga! Cowabunga! Have a great night. Ah, oh, well, was that nice, guys? Round of applause for Michelle Ivy. 21 pizza salute in the chat for Michelle Ivy. Did you guys enjoy that? I wish I had more time. I always wish I had more time. It's so tough to interview someone and you only get a certain amount of time. I screwed up the intro as well. I've been having tech problems recently. 21 pizza salute for her. Friday night. Date with Michelle Ivy. What a Friday night. You're sitting alone at home. On a Friday night, pathetic. I'm talking to Michelle Ivey. We all are talking to Michelle Ivey. Let's type a T in the chat. T for thank you to Michelle Ivey. Ninja Turtles super fan. T for turtles if you like the Ninja Turtles. And T for thank you to Michelle. That was so nice to speak with her. I wish I had more time. Hopefully she'll come back on the show at some point again soon in the future. 
Would love to speak with her more. Now we, we, it's tea time now. Ah, now we can just gossip a little bit. Now we can just hang out. My Riz was ineffective. No, M Michelle Ivy is married to the Ninja Turtles game. She's not looking for a relationship, and neither am I. She's married to the game. She's married to the Ninja Turtles. She's off the market, folks. Ah, oh, well, let me get my tea on the screen here. Let me get my tea. We can just cool off and gossip now. I don't really have much to say. I have no, I have no gossip. Nothing bad to say. She's just a pure super fan. She's a light. I'm upset my internet is still mis malfunctioning. That's frustrating. Hopefully not too much was missed. Hopefully you guys didn't miss too much. But it was nice to talk with her. Did you guys enjoy that? Is that a nice little surprise on a Friday night? I wish I had more time. I felt like I had to wrap up quickly. I wanted so much more to talk about. Ah, uh, well, pizza slices in the chat. Tea's in the chat for Michelle Ivy. Tea for thank you. And thanks, of course, to all of you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was fun. Hope that was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Well, click the like button for Michelle. And leave a comment for Michelle telling her thank you. Wanted to say thanks to all of you as well. Miso Ori, JR24, Tato Ruza, Dilzy, TMNT Station. Hopefully I got to some of your guys' questions. Sorry I couldn't get to everybody. Mr. Turtle, Majin Dex. Hopefully all of you enjoyed that. Daniel, thank you for joining me, everybody. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for tuning in. And a big thank you to Michelle Ivy. What a hero. What a superhero. What a Ninja Turtle super fan for decades. Possibly the world's number one Ninja Turtle super fan. She's a breath of fresh air. She's an inspiration to me. When I'm falling in and out of love with the Ninja Turtles, I check out her stuff. And she is a pure light in the Ninja Turtle fandom, so it's great to speak to someone like her. I was talking to her for a second, and I felt like I was just watching one of her videos. Like, I forgot, like, I was talking to her. Like, I had to respond to what she was saying. I was just watching. That was a weird, that was like a weird I'm on TV kind of moment. But thank you again to Michelle Ivy. Thanks to all of you. I think we've said it all. Happy Friday night. I'll see you next Turtle Tuesday. Going to be uploading some videos soon. Click the like button. Leave a comment. Thank you again. Just one thing left to say. I think I've said it all. Perhaps I've said too much. Just one thing left to say. Kawabunga! Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and share this video. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Ninja Turtles videos like this.